Alrighty, so part two in uh, Pixel Ripped. Look, I must say in, in part one, I kind of hoped the recording was going to be a bit better. What I found out in uh, previewing, I guess, after I uploaded it, was that the, the recording window is now actually a lot smaller. Okay, so I'm recording at full high fidelity in 1080, and so if you zoom your screen in a bit, you'll probably have all of about 700 odd pixels to play with uh, of actual footage. But it, Anybody that cares about pixels really probably shouldn't be playing pixel ripped. It's uh, it's it's lo-fi as much as they go. Look, uh, in, in between publishing that first video and trying to record here the second part, which is only a difference of an hour or so, um, couldn't find any information on the net whether it was 90 or 120 frames a second. It feels like 120. I've, I think I've only got one other game that's running about 120 frames a second, uh, but it feels fluid. It certainly is not 60. I mean, this is one of the nicer games to play, and. Uh, Apparently, a couple of reviews, which I didn't read any of them, but uh, the, the, the short headings by a few people was about the, the blinkers that were employed when you're turning and how it kills motion sickness dead. That uh, This is the way all VR games should be doing it. And uh, it looks like the, the publishers themselves set a, uh, a, pr a pretty good low bar for this game. They uh, It can run on a Quest 2, but the Quest 2 has to be tethered to a PC. It does require the, the higher grunt levels to, uh, to render this game. And uh, they were quite a long way away in development of the game. Uh, when one of the people at Atari approached them and said, look man, you can have full licensing rights to whatever you want. And so the developers literally had to then, they, they'd already written um, a lot of the story and whatnot of the game. A lot of the game was, um, you know, more than a concept people were able to play at this point. And uh, they, they really had to shoehorn in uh, as many Atari references as they possibly could. So they were probably doing that then with a very light-hearted attitude towards that. Uh, and you just kind of pick up on it, I think it's quite fun. But uh, anyway, time to, uh, to game on, eh? Now I understand this is a seated game, I could be playing seated, that would totally make sense, but uh, you know, using probably the better method for a game like this is to record it on the console and then uh, in post editing later just add a little video of a separate camera of me, that way we can play around with dedicated microphones. Uh, I do feel with the mixing levels that uh, the game might be a bit louder than I am, I'll try to talk up if I really have something to say. but. Uh, these videos aren't, you know, for you to experience me. They really just are a chance here for us to experience uh, Pixel Ripped in, in life and action. But uh, as a seated game, it probably doesn't need seeing someone run around the room and shoot stuff like akin to Pistol Whip or Synth Riders where you try to make sense of what's actually going on. Uh, this game seems a bit more slow paced and pretty self explanatory. Okay, so here we are in the Matrix. You can tell it's the Matrix. Everything's green and a phone is ringing. And a truck is coming for us. Right, so I'm going to just uh, I'm gonna leave my hoe behind. Now, anyone who watched part one of the video knows that the little purple blob uh, that is behind me, uh, I think the game referenced it, some sort of a portal or something. It's probably the thing I need to interact with most. Okay, and anyone wondering if, if I can actually hear this? No, it's, it's like any good 80s game. <laughs> Uh, they usually didn't have any tones when they were talking with you, it really was just bit, 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 bit. So uh, this phone is awful. So they're telling me that. No, in 83, this is how people spoke. Ah. Okay, so one of the things I realised when watching my video is that people can't really see the text. So now I'm going to go looking for time breaches. And there's humour all through this. Okay, so. Play a sync. Connect me to the best player available. Join forces to find a breach. Don't tell me there's some form of multiplayer in this. Oh, Bug! Bug is my contact, I think, at Atari. She's our creator. Right. Communications gauntlet, I'm guessing you're there. Maybe this. Look to your left wrist for guidance. There we go, it is that. Alright, look at that. So I've got 10 full pixels, full health. No cartridges out of 40. One. Out of 14 melees, maybe I can go around this. There's probably uh, 13 more gold bricks left on this level to break, is my guess there. Uh, none of the pixel powers, <laughs> and a master's tip, which is what? Where could the purple player sync portal be? Okay, so, uh, done. Alright. So, uh, I'm gonna get my hoe on and go and break some gold bricks, I think. Oh, I'm in it. 
for the pixels. Don't you doubt that for one second. Some people are here to get ripped. I'm in it for the pixels. Okay, so check me out there. If I have a good old look, what have I got? 20 pixels. Do that again. No, 1 of 14 melee. So these are not what I'm trying to do at all. Okay, first quest. Alright, I'm going to get myself a chicken so I can swap it for a purple claw. I'm getting these doors to be open, eh? Okay? Everybody knows chickens are the very best security guards. They are always angry. And that was cute. For a brief moment there, it showed my little barrier in my own actual room. Guessing it's floating up a level. Right. Yeah. Maybe I have to walk off it and back on it. Keep the turning it off and back on again. Um, hmm. So anyone talking about the new consoles with their super fast solid state drives, I'm not looking this is loading a level. Loading a level akin to a tape player in the 70s. So one of the tricks was to kind of hold down the fast forward button while you were loading Ghouls and Ghosts and waiting your whole 10 minutes for the level to load. If you held down the fast forward button, the Commodore 64 could actually get the data off the tape just a little bit quicker. But uh, yeah, here I'm definitely loading akin to a tape. Oh. Oh, okay, so my room's a bit dark, and I think the game lost me for a bit there. It's having a hard time. So it's not the game, it's my setup. Right, okay, so that brief glitch in the game was just purely me. My room is supposed to be dark, but my headset kind of lost track of what was going on. And myself as a player, not following the directions I was given, which is to simply look at my arm and doubt. Whoa! This is the prototype, obviously. Button, that one. 
to them on the uh, title screen, so that was pretty cool. The art and the posters, very much going for, for what was true to the time. In fact, I guess because they got the licensing, they're allowed to, that's insane. That's very Q, Q Burke-ish, was it? Pixel ripped. And again, I feel like I'm kind of in the floor, but you must remember this game is designed for uh, sitting down. Game needs jump. Now, I think I identified that the first four seconds of playing. Let's work on that. It's always easy now. So, I mean, Barbara Rivers, aka Bug, got in her office, her cubicle, if you will. Wonderful for the rest of this going on. Stupid writing contest. Nice. We've been here all of our life, eh? Look at that down for a second. Okay. Okay. Okay, so the bad guy wants to be the, the good guy, so to speak, wants to be the main protagonist. I think that's the whole scene of Pixel Ripped here. There we go, 0 or 40 still, but it's still happy. Oh, 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 like it. Oh, look at this, changing the art. Oh, yes. Pixel Ripped just becomes Sidelin Whipped. Okay, so just like basic coding, 10, cartridge identified, 20, plain, silent. Okay, so this thin little cable here, going to this little red adapter, it's actually feeding, just like the serial cable behind it. Oh, no, okay, so that's the red adapter, beautiful. Oh, there might be power. So, uh, look, whatever you do on this computer, you could actually you even have to get your room finalized. Hey, bug! Now that, Chad, the chatster cool. in the house. Hey, did you see our newest concept art? Wait, who's that guy? <laughs> that doesn't look like our hero. Uh, we need to sell this game for the holidays, not Halloween. Uh, scary looking fella. Uh, where's the concept art for Dot and Master? Tell me it's not in the trash. <laughs> Okay, let me want to set player again. Again, it's really dark. Yay! Concept art for Dun Master, poor Favor. <laughs> you wouldn't throw the art away, right? Yeah. Hey, concept art for Dun Master, poor Favor. Hey, there they are! Kids will love them! So, yeah, I need you to get rid of that ugly guy and fix the game art ASAP. And I say this as both your boss and your friend. This guy is creepy. <laughs> okay, thanks. Alrighty, search 2D game for abilities. Alright. Uh, now there's, there's way too many colours going on for a 2600 game cart, that's that era. Oh look at that, there's little jumps you come off the, uh, off the ladder. So in terms of game needs jump, I've already got jump, just about. This is like playing an Atari game back in the day. I mean, they were pretty simple. I remember getting really excited for getting a Smurf game. It had all of about seven different screens, and you just kept doing the same seven screens over and over and over again. It was a kind of akin to how bad ET was. Oh, Morning, Bug! Ooh, we have a Sidewind Lord fan here. But isn't it a little much since he should be like the villain? Anyways, I brought you some donuts. 
Making games is way harder than we thought when we were kids, you know? We need to keep our sugar levels high. And since I'm your bestest friend ever, I'll fix your broken controller too. Can you hand it to me? There you are! Friend! Look, look at the first button. I have this new prototype for it that I'm working on. I might bring it over later. I hope it helps your game and that other one you gotta test. You know, the one on your desk. Anyways, see ya! This game's way better than the last one. Oh, and I'm gonna jump! Ah, oh, this game's so much better than the last one. Why would I bother playing the other one? Yeah. Anyone ever tried those uh, workout tapes? Pitfall? Think about bulking up. That's a pitfall y. games with graphics like this. Even River Raid couldn't, couldn't do this. It's last gen games like Skate or Die where they were really pushing the size of the cartridges. And this is, I mean, it's not quite Master System or Super Nintendo quality here, but uh, Nintendo quality. A Famicom would be needed for this, not a 2600. Okay, who drew a spider on the toilet paper? Not funny. to the game one. Visual Village. Yes, Pet Bear is very happy to see us. Some people to meet. Well, the village is kind of amazing. In terms of immersion, having tinkered with a couple of VR games, the ability to keep me entertained or keep me in them is usually very limited. If I'm playing Pistol Whip, sure, I want to get a high score, but to have an adventure game like this that just presents so flawlessly and so smoothly. The kind of nausea is really not. And that being said, I mean, I felt nausea for a split second in the in the house when I first played it, just akin to any game I play like this, when I was starting to run around, it was all really quick. But uh, this is definitely a better VR game for the simpler graphics and the fastest. The, I'm guessing it's 120 frames a second. It is just so smooth. Cool. Cool, so 
I'm doing the same game as I was doing just a moment ago. I haven't got a jump button. Um, yes, yeah, so gameplay mechanics were pretty simple back in the uh, early 80s, late 70s. Ah, here comes my melee weapon. where I can move around. Pistol Whip is very plain in one spot. But I must admit, I'm looking at Pavlov in these various games where people are shooting around corners with their body, and it's like, man, I want to get myself a shooter. I must admit, I'm waiting for Light Brigade to uh, get like a dollar off it or any token discount, because that is like, oh man, rogues in my game, man. Like, oh, Light Brigade just looks amazing. It's so mean. But, uh, this is my, this will be my go-to game for a while, I think. Definitely worth the, uh, definitely worth the investment. Anyone that has any nostalgia for this period, anyone who plays these games from back in the day, this is just such a must-get. There's just something for the brain, just seeing those games reimagined and re-realised with crazy resolution in 3D stereoscopic vision and six degrees of freedom for movement. You know, just... wow. Okay, so you can shoot things coming at you, projectiles, you can shoot them out of the air. That's one of the things I find cute. I've seen a couple of screenshots where everything here is rendered at such low resolution, but then there's a lighting pass put over it, which is just altogether next level. And totally different. Uh, it just, it's just cute. and the type of gameplay mechanisms that you would have found in games from that era. The Atari cartridges had all of about four kilobytes to play with. Now, anybody in the modern world, when your phone gets on the net, it moves megabytes of data, right? Millions of bytes, right? But back then, 4,000 bytes, that's essentially 4,000 characters of text, and that was all the programming code. So 10, go to 20, 20, you know, print, line, the screen, whatever. Every single one of those bytes was your limit, your 4,000 bytes. Now, as, as I say, towards the end of the life of the consoles, they probably played with oversized cartridges, things that were pushing more than four kilobytes. But to say that attack patterns from enemies got a lot more convoluted in the Nintendo Entertainment System days, and that's where you play a game like not so much Castlevania, but Belmont's quest or whatever, what they, what they would have been. And so if, if an enemy came in the screen and it was doing a particular flight pattern, it was like Y equals MX plus B or something, it was basic algebra. And it was just plotting uh, a wave, essentially, was, was the attack pattern. And they, they couldn't 
it was, I guess, what I'm trying to say is that the evolution of gaming and having a game like this take you through it and, and actually have attack patterns come at you and they were simple games, man. The Atari 2600 games didn't do a lot. Oh, look at this lighting. Look at this. Look at this shadow. Okay. Keep it too. As I said, my, my room's too dark to play. I really should just turn a light on. But, uh, Please, please don't even take away the hiccups of this game. The hiccups of me. Not the heart of the game, it's superlative. And this is probably the most I've used my system in a couple of little sessions where I'm just keen to just keep going. seen little glitches, I really want to reassure you, my room is pretty dark, and I think the hardware is having a hard time tracking my location, my limbs, so if you've seen my limbs a little bit, oh, I can turn the light circle stretch until Doom and Wolfenstein and various things started coming about. Turn my light on and do a few little things, but for now, that there is a second block of time. I would suggest on uh, what is a fantastic game, uh, a little bit more of uh, I guess what the game looks like, more so what the game world might look like, and how the worlds coalesce, come together, and how we jump it in around between them. It is absolute. I would totally recommend this game. It just looks like it's good to have games that are pushing um, the platform higher. Um, any, any game that's setting a low bar of say a Quest 2 in tethered mode. Uh, that, that's the sort of technology I guess a lot of people want with their, their you know, expensive rigs and whatnot. Um, but for a consumer toy to, to render this much fun in, in such an incredible world and, and just so beautifully realized, uh, the fact that obviously all that Atari licensing was basically gifted to them, uh, that is just, it's a gift to players. I mean really anyone who lived through the Atari era or is, has any nostalgia for that, that time period, um, just must do, must get game. Alrighty, cheers kindly.